Sixty years ago this past summer, when I was an undergraduate student at Notre Dame, I was involved in a summer service project in Mexico. We had two different groups there. About halfway through, we took a little side trip, kind of a brief vacation. And it was to a place called Cristo Rey, Christ the King, where on top of a mountain, there was a large statue of Christ the King. At a certain time, when everybody else was walking around or distracted, I was looking off into the countryside. And all of a sudden, I had this experience of certitude that I was being called to become a priest. I didn't hear any voices. I didn't have a vision. I just had a private moment in which I felt God was present. It took about a year to get accepted to Holy Cross and then seven years of preparation, and then I became a priest and have been such for over 50 years. Perhaps many of you have had similar private moments of revelation where you felt God was present in your decision making. You wanted to marry you dated various people. You were looking for the ideal partner, probably knowing there is no such thing. But then you found somebody and you eventually prayed over it and decided God was speaking to you. And you went forward from this private experience to a public manifestation of that in the sacrament of matrimony. And then if you brought children into the world, you made another decision to have them baptized and assume responsibility for their well-being, physically, emotionally, and religiously. This is the way the world works. Our human freedom gives us the capacity to make good decisions. And some of them are clearly affected by our belief in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. In the scriptures, God communicated in a variety of ways to people who would play a special role in the history of God's people, people of Israel and the Christian community. Sometimes it was in a, a fiery bush or it could be an angelic voice, or it could be somebody representing God coming and speaking, like it was with Paul. Whatever the form, the option existed for that person to say yes or no. Think, for example, of the prophets of Israel. There were bad prophets and good prophets, and they had to defend their mission that they were speaking on God's behalf and not on their own. And so they describe experiences they had, applying a coal, a hot coal to their mouth, or taking some special set of acts in order to communicate to others that God was with them. You can think of Moses and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and so on. When we, when we enter the infancy narratives, we enter the world of mystery and wonder and the miraculous. The same God who created the universe is suddenly present through human acceptance of responsibility for the greatest moment in human history. When the love of God was manifest in the birth of Jesus, and eventually in his public ministry and resurrection from the dead. There are some who find miracles embarrassing. What a strange world it would be if there were no miracles. On the other hand, we know that we want to live with nature. If we're sick, we go to a doctor and we take our meds. And at the end, if we're seriously ill and there's no medical solution, we pray, perhaps for a miraculous healing for ourselves or someone we love. And that's true for students 
If you didn't study, don't pray at the last minute to get an A. There are certain things expected. On the other hand, we don't want to simply live in a world that's flat, that has no special moments, no highs, no things to be joyful about. And as we prepare to celebrate the great feast of Christmas, we know that Mary and Joseph both had to respond to an invitation from God. Matthew's Gospel tells the story of the infancy of, of Jesus from Joseph's point of view, and Luke tells it from Mary's point of view. And in both cases, there needed to be an intervention for the recognition that what had been promised in the prophetic literature, that a virgin would give birth to a child that would be called Emmanuel, God with us, that that was going to be a decisive moment in the history of God's relationship with humanity. Emmanuel. Or as Joseph was instructed, his name will be Jesus, which etymologically means Savior. So when we say Jesus Christ, we say Savior, the promised one. Every time we say Jesus Christ, we proclaim the depth of our own faith. And of course, Mary was the special one. And when she received the invitation from the angel Gabriel to be the mother of the Lord, in her human freedom she could have said no, or I'm not ready, or I'm not prepared. But in the depth of faith she said yes, and that made all the difference. Nothing is impossible to God. What a great proclamation that is. And Joseph, on human terms, was tempted to divorce her. They had not slept together and she was pregnant. And in that particular cultural context, he could have taken the next step. But instead he took her into his home. And together they prepared for this amazing role that they would play together in human history, that they would nurture the Son of God, that they would be present with love and patience and understanding like all parents are called to do, and that the result of all that, when Jesus began his public ministry, he knew what love was all about because he had experienced it from Mary and Joseph, and he had been instructed in the elements of the Jewish religion. So when he began his ministry, he could be eloquent in interpreting the scriptures. And then, of course, with confidence that he was doing the will of the Father, he healed, he taught, he created a community of faith and belonging and of service. And after Pentecost, they were unleashed on the world. So last Sunday, we said we should be joyful because we were halfway through Advent. And today we say we should be full of awe and wonder and we should be full of expectation as we prepare for the great feast of Christmas. When we look at the crest scene and first of all see the empty crib and then we see the presence of the baby Jesus, we have to think and contemplate how could this possibly be? How could the living God, the Lord of all creation, assume the fullness of our humanity except for sin? And we know that that was a transformative thing. And he would, he would reveal to us that the very nature of God is one of love among the persons of the Trinity manifest in him. And now he is the word he has spoken to us. We don't need other agents. If we listen to his word and follow his example, we too can live at peace and harmony with God and with one another.